Section 5.4 is a general form of factoring a polynomial. So what are our basic steps when we give a polynomial and we need to factor it? So this is kind of our general strategy. So the first thing you're always going to want to do is factor out the GCS. Then you need to determine the number of uh, terms. If there are two terms, it could possibly be a difference of two squares or a sum of two squares, uh, a difference of two squares, sorry, just a difference of two squares, or it could be a sum of two cubes or a difference of two cubes. If there are three terms, the trinomial can be factored by, just look this third method, finding the factors of AC that add to B. That's what I would recommend. If there are four or more terms, you can try and factor by grouping. Then, after you think you've factored it, you need to double check to make sure if any factors with more than one term can be factored further, and if so, factor completely. You can check your answer if you doubt yourself by multiplying. I always recommend doing this on exams, or if you get a problem wrong on your homework, to kind of work backwards and maybe say we made a tiny mathematical error. So let's go ahead and get started and work through quite a few more examples of how to factor. So if I've got for example, 1, 9p plus 45, first thing I'm going to want to do is factor out the greatest common factor, which is 9. So that leaves me with 9 times p plus 5, and I can't factor this any further. For problem 2, I've got 8x squared y squared plus 4xy, their greatest common factor. Again, look at the coefficients and then the variables. So the greatest common factor of that coefficient is 4. We've got an x in common and a y, so I'm going to have 4xy times 2xy plus 1 when I pull out the greatest common factor. For problem 3, I have 5x times a plus b minus y times a plus b. Their greatest common factor is a plus b, so I'm left with a plus b times 5x minus y. For problem four, let's double check, but to me this looks like a difference of squares. In this case, I've got 16x squared minus 9y squared. That's going to factor. If I've got a squared minus b squared, remember that factors to a plus b, times a minus b and our middle terms will cancel. My a is 4x. My b is 3y, so I'm going to factor to 4x plus 3y times 4x minus 3y. I also could have factored this by putting in a zero placeholder and finding the factors of AC that added up to B. I've got 8x cubed minus 27. You want to again start by factoring out the greatest common factor. Again, 8 and 27 don't have a greatest common factor. This is one of the rules we did have to memorize. I've got a cubed minus b cubed factors into a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So, and then for pro, uh, the sum, I have a cubed plus b cubed is a plus b times a squared minus a b plus b squared. So, for problem one, my a is going to be like coefficient first, 2x, my b is going to be 3, and then I just plug it in. So this factors perfectly into a minus b, so 2x minus 3, plus times a squared, which is 4x squared, plus a times b, which is 6x, plus b squared, which is 9. For problem 2, I've got 1,000y cubed plus 1. My a is going to be 1,000 is 10 cubed, just as an FYI, so I've got 10y. My b is 1, because 1 cubed is 1. It's not very exciting. And this is going to factor into 10y plus 1 times 100y squared minus 10y plus 1. For problem 3, I've got 25m squared plus 121. Okay, well, think about this. Yes, these are perfect squares, but we cannot factor 
a sum of perfect squares? Only a difference. And let me show you why real quick. We're going to go on a fun little tangent with an easier to look at example. So if I have x squared minus 9, we know that can factor into x plus 3 times x minus 3. Well, why does this work? This works because if I was to factor this old way, I'm saying, okay, what are the factors of AC, which is negative 9, that add up to B, which is 0? Well, some factors of negative 9 that add up to 0 are 3 and negative 1, right? And 3 and negative 1 are 0. So this becomes x squared minus 3x plus 3x minus 9. And then you could factor by grouping, or you could have used our little shortcut, right? For when we've got a leading coefficient of 1. Voila! But what if I had x squared plus 9? Well, that's like saying, what are the factors of positive 9 that add up to 0? Well, there are no factors of positive 9 that add up to 0. Negative 3 and negative 3 would add up to negative 6. 3 and 3 would add up to 6. 1 and 9. Oh, I ran out of room. Hmm. 1 and 9, right, would add up to 10. Negative 1 and negative 9 would add up to negative 10. So this is prime. That's why we can never factor the sum of two squares.